Hey there. If you are coming in fresh from my last video with the Ian Urbina and New York Times stuff, expecting some angry hot takes, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but this video is about bringing two competitors together in unity. You see, I want to review this, the Poly Hector module, just a plain old review. This feature's awesome, this feature's cool, this feature sucks, five out of seven kisses. But I personally can't really review it because seemingly nobody can really talk about this without comparing it to this, the Empress Euro Bureau. The reason for this, to give you a little bit of history, a couple of years ago, Empress released the Zoya, which is a multi-function create your own effects pedal that was hugely successful. And right after that came out, Poly released the Bebo, which is a multi-function create your own effects pedal, which was hugely successful. Earlier this year, Empress released the long-awaited Eurorack synth module version of the Zoya called the Euro Bureau. And also earlier this year, like the same week, Poly released the long-awaited synth module version of the Bebo called the Hector. If you Google the words Poly Hector, it will autofill with the word Euro Bureau. And if you Google Euro Bureau, it will autofill with the word versus Poly Hector. And if you look at my inboxes on any social media site, you will see a bunch of people ask me the question, which one of these should I buy? So that's why I'm making this video to answer the most commonly asked specific question that I've received in 2021. Which one of these should you buy? And the answer is both. The longer and more honest answer is that I have been working with Empress for years and I've been involved with the Zoya for years and I've had the prototype of the Euro Bureau for years and I'm so comfortable with that user interface that I can usually guess successfully how much CPU an idea that I have is going to use. So naturally in a world where only one of these modules or pedals can exist, I'm going to choose the Zoya or Euro Bureau, but we're also kind of entering Android versus iPhone territory where a bias is formed based on your muscle memory and using a particular user interface. But really, the ideal answer is both, because on the surface, people look at these as competitors, but I think that they complement each other a lot more than they replace one another. So for example, the digital oscillators and filters on the Euro Bureau are very analog sounding. You could make a very convincing subtractive monosynth with ease that would sound indistinguishable to something like a Mother 32 for a lot of people. People. The Hector, on the other hand, has a touchscreen user interface for many of the open source mutable instruments modules. So you could have something like the digital vocal synthesizer from Platts or the physical modeling resonator sounds from Rings. The Hector has really powerful custom impulse response modeling and overdrive, while the algorithmic reverb and delays leave a little bit to be desired. The Euro Bureau, on the other hand, leaves a little bit to be desired with the cab modeling and overdrive and doesn't allow you to load your own impulse responses, but the reverb and echo algorithms are world class. The Euro Bureau has a really impressive amount of logic and utility modules that allow you to create your own very deep generative sequencer. The Hector, on the other hand, has user interfaces for classics like mutable marbles and grids, allowing you to create rhythmic patterns for your sequences. They both have quantizers, but the quantizer on the Euro Bureau has you picking the name of the scale you want to use, while the quantizer on the Hector has you picking the keys you want to use. Of course, they do share quite a few similar modules like LFOs and envelopes, but I feel like most people want to place those things in a convenient place depending on what they're modulating rather than running a physical cable just for something like modulating the frequency of an oscillator. So when these two things are combined, you have a digital modular and effects powerhouse capable of pretty much anything that you could think of. And it's quite portable. You could use a little power bank and fit this on your lap and then use the Euro Bureau's headphone output. Alternatively, since both of these can store presets, if you added some quarter inch in and out modules, you could create the most powerful and explorable multi-guitar effects unit one could possibly ask for. And all that functionality runs new with a list price of $1,250. And I'm not including the modular case because that is the cool part about modular. You should be customizing this however you like it. Now, of course, $1,250 is a lot of money. It is still cheaper than a Teenage Engineering Op 1 or a lot of Electron boxes. It's about the same price as two premium pedals or two premium modules. And I think that most beginner modular configurations in this price range are very limited compared to what this could do. All right, 
I'm going to play around with these for about two hours, have some fun, and show you what's possible with the footprint of only 12 inches or 64 HP. Let's go. So you're going to see me using this pen on the Hector. You don't need to use a pen on the Hector. It's just so I don't smudge up the screen, which will annoy me and you. Let's start off doing something really basic, but something that is unique to modular. One of my favorite modules is Mutable Instruments Rings. So I'm going to load that up on here and control it via MIDI. And then I'm going to load it through one of my favorite reverbs, which is the ghost verb from Empress. And then we'll go from the output into my recorder. So I'm going to plug in the CV gate out from the key step into the Poly Hector, and it's probably going to make an annoying sound. And it does. The reason it's making that ugly noise is because the key step is being powered by what I would consider dirty power. It's just going into an outlet that is also being shared with a bunch of lights and monitor displays and cameras and things like that. This does not make this sound in the studio where I intentionally have clean power going to it. But here we are. Now I will make the one and two outputs go into the left and right inputs of the Euro Bureau. I'm gonna add a module to the Hector. I'm gonna select synth, and I think it's called multi-resonator. That is the one. I'm gonna add that. So CV in one is the gate, and so that will go into the strum. And CV in two is pitch. That will go into pitch. Then our output will be left and right, or even an odd. And I will put that on one and two or left and right. Since we're dealing with rings, we're going to want to increase the polyphony to four. That way we have an even and out signal. And then we should see both of these lighting up as I press the keys, which we do. Now on the Empress, I'm going to go to effect modules and I'm going to pick out the old ghost verb. And that can be red. And let's make it two in and two out. I'm going to connect the left input to the reverb, the right input to the reverb, then the reverb output to left and right, and now we should actually hear something. So now some of the CV coming in here is a little bit out of tune, and that's okay because we're dealing with analog signals, so I am going to add a quantizer to help deal with that situation. Okay, so now we have the pleasure of disconnecting a connection in which we do just like that. And now I'm going to connect input two to the quantizer, and then the quantizer can go out back into the multi-resonator. Now let's see how this sounds. Much better. I've decided that I'm gonna change the ghost verb to hall verb, because I would rather modulate the pitch of the actual voice than having the modulation in the reverb. And the hall reverb is probably a more accurate and smooth sounding algorithm anyway. So it's left into left, right into right, left out to left, right out to right, and let's test it. I'm going to go to a new page here on the Euro Bureau and I'm going to create a sequencer. And that sequencer can have 16 steps, two tracks. We'll give it a restart jack and it will loop. So we're going to disconnect the key step and the gate of that sequencer will be going to CV out one and I will put the voice on CV out two. And so we could connect these things right now. So gate and voice out there. Okay, so now we need some sort of clock to drive this sequencer. And what better than Mutable Instruments Grids, which I believe here is just called Drum Patterns. And here it is. And so we can have that go out to output four. And we will just have it be the bass drum trigger. Then that output four is going into CV in one on the Euro Bureau. And let's run that clock and bring the chaos up a little bit. Maybe the bass drum density up a bit. I'm gonna to go to a new page and I'm gonna create an oscillator and a filter that will just create kind of a sparse 
random pad note. And if I'm going way over your head with this, I have made quite a few videos on the Euro Bureau and the Empress Zoya so you can understand what's going on with the interface. I definitely recommend to check those out. I'll link to them in the bio, of course. Now I'm going to use grids to create a different strum for our rings module. Okay, so random idea here, I am going to just create a little playable synthesizer with the Hector here, and then we could turn it into a looping performance instrument with the Euro Bureau. Whether or not you're a fan of mutable instruments, open source Euro Rack modules being virtual modules on this Euro Rack module, you can't deny how awesome it is to actually have a GUI that sort of explains what's going on rather than just the knob and manual that you would have with the actual mutable instruments modules. I really do appreciate that, and it actually has taught me how to use some of these modules better than the manual has, believe it or not. I'm actually going to use a VCA because I would like to actually control the velocity of what's happening here. So velocity to the VCA. So we could try a different adapter here. Maybe this will do it. I think we have a third option here that we could try. And we are connected correctly here, right? Man, what a bummer. So what you see here are four different MIDI to 3.5 millimeter adapters, and all of them route the pin information to the ring and tip differently. I'm not saying that they all do differently from one another, but they all do differently from how Polys does. Now I have about a hundred of these, and I got the Poly Hector prototype three to four months ago, and I have no idea which one goes to that. But I think my overall point is that this is not the fault of Poly or any of these companies individually. I just wish we would all agree on one standard and stick to that because this is something I seem to do with every single synthesizer that has 3.5 millimeter MIDI. Anyway, so we have to abandon my dreams of having velocity in this patch because we're going to be using CV gate. So I'm going to hurry up and try and create a drum patch on this Hector that will then layer over this tape loop.
So if you're the follower of this channel, then you probably saw me bring this thing around the country last summer, and one of the spots was White Sands, New Mexico, and I was just listening to this patch and thinking, what if we took some of these synth voices and just hosted them here, but kept this sequence the same? And that way we would have this larger palette, such as the resonators from rings or something like that, rather than only the subtractive synth sounds or the one or two operator FM sounds that we could create on the Euro Bureau. So what do you think? I think that for the price and size, if you don't own any modules and you want to dive into the world of Eurorack, this is a very complete and interesting way to start. One of the rather unexpected reasons for this is that both the Euro Bureau and the Hector have a function where if you load a virtual module, it has a little bit of text or sort of a help file that tells you what it does. So if you don't know what an attenuator does, it'll tell you. And another unexpected thing that I mentioned earlier, I am a huge Mutable Instruments fan. I have a ton of their modules, and I actually learned some things that I didn't even know existed in those modules just because the Hector's user interface laid it all out in front of me in a way where I could easily understand it. If you have to pick one, as much as I want to say that it's a close tie, I'm not going to say that because there are very few instances where I could see one of these replacing the other, at least in my workflow. I would hedge my bets that if I picked an electronic musician at random and lent them the Hector for a week and the Euro Bureau for a week, the music they made on those two weeks would be drastically different. I guess. I don't know. I'm talking out of my ass at this. While there is a bit of a learning curve, I honestly really, really love the workflow of the Zoya and the Euro Bureau, but I do understand that there are some people who just cannot agree with that user interface. And if you're one of those people, or if a touch screen is important to you, then obviously the Poly Hector is the one for you. On the other hand, if you want to go super deep and create AI generative synth patches like the ones you've seen me do on this channel using this, once you learn how to label pages and organize things properly on the Euro Bureau, you have a lot more to work with in that area. If you already have a modular synth set up and you are looking at one of these just to use as an end of chain effects, then I would say that if you are interested in lush, billowy sounding algorithmic reverb or very good emulations of something like a stereo vintage tape delay, then Empress is going to be the solid choice for you. If you are looking for something like overdrive or custom impulse responses, cab modeling, chorus, then the Poly Hector will probably make you happier. But mostly, like I said earlier, apples and oranges. And as always, if you like this video, subscribe to my channel. If there's anything you want me to cover in the future, let me know in the comments. If you want access to a large, amazing, supportive community of musicians and music lovers that host everything from a monthly music making challenge to game servers and music assets and unreleased music that you hear on this channel and even some of my released music. I think I just uploaded 45 albums or 32 hours of music. All of that stuff is on my Patreon and you can join for as little as one dower. All right, see you later. Bye.